When the sun rose, the Pharaoh's men got suspicious about the silence in the city and ran to the houses of the sons of Israel. They saw that all the houses were empty. There was no sound. The news was sent to the palace. The Pharaoh got so angry that he shouted at his men. Get ready. Moses and his people are weak and powerless. We are strong and intelligent. Let's capture and punish them. The soldiers who heard the Pharaoh's command came from everywhere. The Pharaoh immediately set off with his army. Riding their horses, they moved like wind. In the meantime, the sons of Israel arrived at the coast of a big sea. When they heard that the Pharaoh was chasing them with his soldiers, they went into panic. There was the Red Sea in front of them and an army of a bad king after them. How were they going to be saved? Alas, they shouted, we will be caught. What are we going to do now? Moses, peace be upon him, had a strong belief that God's help would come. Don't be afraid, he said, they cannot catch us. Certainly, my Lord will show us a way out. At that moment, Allah the Almighty commanded Moses to hit his staff to the sea. As soon as the messenger of Allah hit his staff, a dry path opened in the midst of the sea. Waves rose like mountains on each side of the path. But they would not get united and close the path. It was a great miracle. The sons of Israel were in complete astonishment. They went through the path with Moses so quickly that they neither looked back nor did they take a breath until they passed through the sea. This was a matter of life or death. None of them wanted to be captured by the Pharaoh. At last they managed to pass the Red Sea between huge waves. The Pharaoh became so blinded by his anger that he could think nothing but to capture the sons of Israel. He paid attention to neither the divided sea nor the huge waves. He went into the sea with his soldiers. He thought that he could pass through the sea like the believers did. However, Allah the Almighty did not let them pass. The mountain of waves collapsed over them. The Pharaoh and his soldiers submerged in the sea. When the Pharaoh understood that he was going to die, he said in panic, I believe and submit myself to the Lord of Moses. There is no God other than him. I am one of the Muslims. However, his word at the brink of death did not help. Allah did not forgive the Pharaoh and his soldiers. All of them drowned under wild waves. The end of the Pharaoh, who had a great kingdom and rule on earth, became very bad. He no longer had huge vineyards, orchards, a palace, and men fulfilling his orders. Only his dead body remained.
Allah the Almighty did not let the Pharaoh's body decompose in order to make his body a lesson to the coming generations. Journey in the Desert and the Ten Commandments The journey of the sons of Israel continued. They traveled day and night under the leadership of Moses in the desert Sinai. They finally arrived at the foot of Mount Sinai, where Moses talked to Allah. All of them were tired and sleepless because of days of traveling. There was neither a place to rest nor food in the desert. The sun was burning hot. Unrest started to arise among the sons of Israel. In spite of all miracles they saw, they were easily losing their hope and getting bored. Moses advised them to be patient and to trust Allah. Allah the Almighty did not leave the sons of Israel helpless in the desert. He made their life easy by sending various miracles. He sent down manna and quails for them to eat. They filled their stomachs with these delicious foods without spending any effort. Allah commanded his messenger to hit his staff onto a rock. As soon as Moses struck his staff to the rock, twelve springs started to flow out of it. The sons of Israel were twelve tribes, and each tribe had its own spring to drink. Allah the Almighty made clouds on the sky a shade for the sons of Israel. Clouds were moving with the command of Allah and protecting them from the hot weather. After that, Allah commanded Moses to climb the Mount Sinai. There he would inform him about the obligations and prohibitions that the sons of Israel must follow. The prophet Moses was going to stay on the mountain for 40 days. He completed his preparations for travel in a short period of time. Then he said to his brother Aaron, You will stay with my community while I am not here. Do not let them feel my absence. Guide them to the right path. Keep them out of misdoings. Aaron promised Moses and saw him off. The prophet Moses climbed Mount Sinai for days. He finally arrived at the valley where he had been given the good news of his prophethood by his Lord. He was so excited and worried. He wanted to see his Lord, to whom he had talked in the valley of Tua. Excitedly, he said, My Lord, I want to see your divine beauty. Show me yourself. Allah said, O oh Moses, you cannot see me, but look at the mountains. If it can bear, you will see me too. Moses looked at the mountains. The mountains that Allah manifested himself shattered and fell into pieces. The messenger of Allah fainted because of the effect of what he saw. When he woke up, he understood his fault. My Lord, he said, how magnificent you are. Forgive me that I overstepped my limits. Accept my repentance. Allah the Almighty gave Moses ten tablets on Mount Sinai. In these tablets, he was indicating the way of how the sons of Israel were going to perform their worship and how they should treat each other. There were also commandments about not to associate partners to Allah, to do favors to parents, and not to steal. Moreover, there was information about how they could heal illnesses and how they could fight against their enemies. Moses took the tablets and came down from the mountain. He was away from his community for 40 days. However, he could not become happy to see his people when he returned. 
because the sons of Israel had made the statue of a golden calf for themselves by taking advantage of the absence of Moses and started worshipping it. They had forgotten their Lord, who had saved them from the Pharaoh's oppression and tortures, helped them pass the Red Sea, provided them delicious food and water in the desert. Moses did not know what to do because of his anger. He found Aaron, held him, and said, Did not I leave you as the leader of this community? Why did you not look after them? Look at them. As you know, our Lord is Allah who sent us to the Pharaoh. Aaron was desperate. He burst into tears. Oh, my brother, he said, do not be angry with me. I wanted to prevent the sons of Israel to worship the statue of the calf, but they wanted to kill me. I was weakened. I could not make them listen to me. Moses understood that Aaron was innocent. Then he went to his community and confronted them. O oh, sons of Israel, he said, did not my Lord make a good promise to you? How much time passed? Or did you want to be punished by your Lord so that you broke your promise? The sons of Israel replied, We did not break our word on our own. The Samaritan made the statue of the calf. He was a man who wanted to come into prominence and was considering himself our leader. The prophet Moses found the Samaritan and asked him why he did this. The Samaritan answered, I saw something that they did not see. I took a handful of dust from where the messenger stepped on. Then I sprinkled it on the calf I made out of jewelries. People started to worship this statue. My inner self made me do this. Moses said, You are a great sinner. Wait for the punishment of Allah. Now I will burn the statue and throw it into the sea. The Samaritan got scared and surprised. Indeed, he had made the calf in order to get his community's respect. He had not thought about what was going to happen to him when Moses returned. The prophet Moses sent the Samaritan away. Then he wanted his community to repent for having worshipped the calf. The sons of Israel regretted what they had done and repented for their sins. From that day on, Moses, peace be upon him, started to read his community the Ten Commandments written on the tablets he brought. He taught the Ten Commandments to his community. The sons of Israel started to educate each other and live according to the Ten Commandments.